take maybe an application that was developed by my partner, put it on my system, and I can work with their system without trying to go through all the firewall application, uh, well, let's put it this way, to apply for adding a you know, firewall rule in the firewall to let me go through, right? And vice versa as well. So if, if uh, let's say, Philips has an application, uh, basically we will give the application to uh, our partner and they don't have to go through the pain of this uh, you know, review and then approval process. They can put it right there and then run it. Now the challenge here is, you can imagine, is that now my device is actually pulling or running or connecting to another device and while I am exchanging data with the other partner, I still have to be careful that I only exchange what I want to exchange and then the rest of whatever is on my system, the data, is basically secure to the extent that if even if something happened and someone was able to pull it away, that data is still protected. Right. So, if you, if you want a quick build on this, and if you want to go and, uh, I hate to do it, but another plug for the Jericho Forum website. Available on the Jericho Forum website. Um, if you want to go and look at the slide set uh, from the two full day sessions, one in London and one in Chicago, that we did earlier this year, uh, BP presented their roadmap of what they were doing, taking 18,000 users off their intranet onto the internet, but also a look at where they were going. They are talking about giving their workers IT allowances. Here is an IT allowance. Go down to Home Depot, PC World, Walmart, wherever, buy yourself whatever kit you want out of your IT allowance to work. No more corporate machines. No, no corporate laptop. Just buy one down at Compu Comp USA. I, I, <laughs> I, think, I think today to do it would probably be corporate suicide. Um, <laughs> but, but, as, but as an aspirational goal, I think it's got a lot of merits. Yes, it is. And one of, one of the things, and it said you can see it from the BP slides, um, but one of the things they are doing is that for every user that they take off the intranet and put them onto the internet, they, take, they, they, get, they get a driving license. So they actually, you have to do the training, get the driving license, and then you can do it. And yeah, effectively, everyone, to some extent, becomes their own security engineer. <laughs> yeah, and... Yeah, and I, I said it was an aside, and I don't want to go down too much of a rat hole on this one, but, but it, you know, it's, an, it's an interesting aside in terms of, of some of the direction. Uh, and the, but they're deadly serious about doing this. Yeah, if you haven't discovered it out there, humanfirewall.org is a, is a great website for uh, resources on, on user training. Yeah, and, and I think you're right. I mean, any, any organization has to have the right balance of people, process, and tools. Um, but but I, I think going back to the assumption here is that the, from, from a technical infrastructure perspective, uh, the current state environments do, do not allow us the right level of security, or, or my clients in this, these days, uh, the right level of security to, to effectively manage an organization and protect information effectively. And so that, that's ultimately what the, the challenge is all about, right? Oh yeah, the, migra the migration problems are going to be uh, going to be large, and don't underestimate them. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I just want to just come on. I think that's one of the one of the things that absolutely everybody has to understand is deprimitization doesn't necessarily mean taking all the firewalls out. Firewalls are still going to always be a necessity because admins will always make mistakes and open things that should have never been opened on a box. That's that human factor. 
but it's more about having a set of defined business protocols you allow through your firewall. Maybe it's SSL. And just saying anybody can talk SSL through the firewall to these business appliances. We'll we won't build access control lists on the firewall to say that Gordon can talk to me and, and Paul cannot. I'll say anybody can talk SSL and whoever certificates authenticate right on the application, that's who gets the data. So we're saying don't try and use the firewalls to control the applications. Use the firewalls to let the business applications through, enable the business, and use the firewalls to throw out the garbage, the attacks, the denial of service, the protocols that should have never come through, like Telnet. If it's not a secure protocol, don't let it through the firewall. They're always going to be a fact of life. Um, plug into the internet, plug into the Wi-Fi down at DEF CON, you'll understand why you're going to need a little <laughs> firewall. Um, on the application side, it, it just, you're asking about secure applications. It's absolutely something that has to change, and that's that's one of the, my passions. Is if you come down to DEF CON at the CTF network, you're going to see nine teams hacking 40 custom applications we wrote for the teams. It's all about being able to run secure applications, and we're challenging people in these conventions now to learn how to write and secure applications for this reason, because the firewall is not going to control the access to them anymore. The firewall is going to say everybody can talk to this application as long as it's using this secure business protocol. The firewall's role is basically going to be what we used to think of an access control on a router. It's going to stop the garbage. Yeah, I want to come back to the uh, user awareness uh, and actually talk about accountability, which is also associated with, with the challenge. Um, when we say that users have a larger responsibility to basically, well, fulfill their part of the commitment and uh, responsibility to make a system or their operations secure, there is part of the challenge to make sure that there is what we call the trust, that we trust the user will fulfill their responsibility, but also the verification part. And in a very open internet situation, the verification actually becomes quite a challenge of its own. Because the thing about this today, I would assume that most uh, large enterprise would have some kind of a proxy server that actually you would try to monitor what is going through at least uh, what URLs are being accessed and there's certain blacklist or, or no-go list. But in, in, the, in a more open internet situation, those types of proxy servers probably would not exist. You may have a site that maybe have 100 users uh, that are working out of there and they may have some kind of a very simple, I don't know, Linksys uh, far, uh, router, but there's no proxy. And then how do you actually uh, enforce your what, uh, what we call the accountability here. Okay. So accountability actually becomes a challenge as well. Yeah, absolutely. Down the back. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I, th I think prob probably the answer is no. That there will be a th there will need to be a set of assumptions that DNS is, exists and can be trusted. Uh, we all know it can't, but uh, <laughs> you know, we have we have to start somewhere. Um, so there th no, there will be some some external dependencies. I think that will will sort of give us will be a given um, that they're there. You can use them. Okay, fair enough. No, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a yeah. Point taken. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I, in terms of things that I think we're counting out at the moment, um, one is probably the competition will bar denial of service attacks. The assumption will be because you are operating on an internet, therefore quality of service cannot be guaranteed and therefore denial of service attacks are not fair game. 
That's certainly the thinking. I mean, you feel free to challenge it. I mean, I'm not. This, nothing's cast in stone at this point. I'll challenge it. Sorry. So, what I would say on the DMS, uh, DOS route is, you probably need to throw out the line rate saturation kind of issues, but your application should very well be able to handle yes. whatever defined line rate or those transaction types. Yes. I mean, yeah, you okay. can have a, you know, there should be no application DOS attacks in this situation. There's no reverse back end of one UDP packet requests a five gig file from the application kind of situations. But yeah, it should be able to withstand. It should be able to intelli oh, intelligently handle a DOS attack. But ultimately, it's not fair game, certainly as far as the DEF CON challenge part of this, is to sit and DOS it for two days and say, well, it doesn't work, does it? <laughs> Sorry? Anyone can line saturate, yes. I mean, ultimately, it, it, has to it, it has to intelligently handle, you know, when it doesn't, when the line saturates such that it doesn't fall over or crash or do something untowards, but ultimately it's not fair game to do it for two days. Okay. Well, what, I mean, what, again, one one of the thinking is is that uh, certainly we get it independently verified um, in terms of it meets what they've set out in their architecture paper. Um, whether we get it independently tested, um, again, thinking has been thrown out that we get someone like a Qualis, um, if nothing else, because the Jericho Forum members um, to do an to do a, an analysis of what they can see from their point of view at it. Um, what vulnerabilities exist, what they can actually physically, you know, see just by probing the line. Um. Sorry? Uh, the, fu the funding works that you fund it. <laughs> it's as simple as that. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the, re the reason for having a large amount of prize money behind it is that uh, it's, it's shared risk. So you, you stump up the, uh, the time, effort, and money to, uh, to scrounge the kit, fund the kit, however you want to get the kit, and the, and the time and effort to put it together. Um, the thinking very much is that probably it will be a collaborative effort. Um, it will require components from a number of sources and organizations to help sponsor things. Um, I doubt that any one individual at this level could be able to put an e a, a credible entry in, but potentially a large, t you know, a team of, of individuals could. Um, targeted at, again at university departments, perhaps. Um, so the computer science, you know, department will, will put in an entry, um, and then again, corporate organisations, vendors will put en put entries in. Is is the thinking at the moment? But. I prepare to be surprised. Who knows? But yeah, sh shared risk model. That's a, I mean, that, that's one of the in that certainly that's why the decision is it's an all or nothing one prize, akin to the. I mean, it's the same way that Dar DARPA did the um, you know the the unmanned vehicles in the desert challenge, single prize. <laughs>